Hey, I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, a webinar sponsored by Love KC, and we have Gary Kendall, the founder, with us tonight by Disciple KC. Uh, I just happen to be the, the uh, founder of that, and, um, and bless every home. And our hope is that uh, we can have a discussion tonight about what it would be like to plant the gospel in neighborhoods in Kansas City in such a way that it would repeat itself. And so that maybe even in my lifetime, uh, we might be able to see the Great Commission fulfilled in this city. Um, I'm uh, 65 years old, so we don't have much time. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, as, as folks listen to this, uh, they'll get excited and join. We also have um, uh, Bree and Matt with us. Uh, Bree and Matt are, are um, a part of a really exciting ministry here uh, in town called Casey Underground. And I've been privileged to, to partner with them and, and to be a part of what they're doing. And it's pretty exciting. So, Gary, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about Love KC? What, what is it and, and what uh, was the, the movement in you that God used to start it? Yeah, thanks, Roy. And it, it's great to be a part of, of this webinar. And I know that, you know, this, this kind of content will uh, – be shared across the city. And our hope is that people will come to some of the same kind of life-giving conclusions that, we, that we've reached. And my, my story, just to give a really quick um, turn on that, I pastor, started Indian Creek Community Church a letter for about 30 years. And uh, the church grew and we saw a lot of great things happen. But toward uh, 2014, 2015, I had been to uh, India and to China many, many times. And was just really impacted by the way that the church, you know, people didn't go to church, they, they were the church, you know, and we, always, we would always say that in America, and I know that Indian Creek, that's what they wanted at, at, at their heart. And, but I just couldn't, I just felt like if I had another uh, chapter to give, like a fourth quarter in my life, I just really felt like I was saying to leave one church to serve many. And to go after this idea of prayer evangelism, evangelism and discipleship were all wound together when Jesus called the disciples to come follow me, he said, I'll make you fishers of men. And that needs to be the priority. And it's really easy in the Western world for, for it not to be. So we value so many things in our churches and go after so many things. Sometimes prayer evangelism and discipleship actually get left out. And the, the conviction in my heart was just growing stronger and stronger. I, I woke up one night, my, my first waking thought was I'm about to move and you could, and you could miss it. It was about 2014 or so. Wow. And uh, so I was just like, oh, God, what am I going to miss? And I just felt like God was really calling me to a place of prayer. And for the next two years, just really, for a year and a half, it was every day at 6 a.m. just praying and usually an hour, an hour and a half, just seeking after God. And I, I thought there would be some kind of big revelation, but that didn't happen. What, what did happen was just a real sense of uh, that we are God's Joey love sons and daughters. And I felt like I was working from a place almost like a servant would work, you know, or a worker would work versus living as a son or daughter. And out of that came this deep desire to see everybody, every, every child in Kansas City know the same love from their father. And it just it wrecked me. It wrecked me for uh, what I was doing every day and gave me a desire to see something more. And out of that, really began to pray that every single family would be prayed for by name in Kansas City, and that every person in Kansas City should have the gospel privilege of hearing the good news of Jesus from a friend, and that every neighborhood could be adopted by someone living a prayer, care, share life, or living on mission, as we often say. At that time, I didn't know Chris Cooper, hadn't heard about anything from Bless Every Home, just had a really a mission from God that sometimes I felt like I was kind of like a lone ranger. But then as I talked to other people, I talked to you, Roy, I talk, talked to Rob Wagner, I talked to, to Corey Osmond. And the more people I talked to, it's like, oh my gosh, like a lot of people have this same kind of calling in their life. And I began to search for tools and, and ways to go after this in a practical way. About three years ago, 2017, Love KC was born. And our primary goal at that point was to see every neighborhood adopted in Kansas City. I didn't really know how many there were. I know that now there's, I now know that there's 1,309 census block groups. A census block group is about 600 families or so that live in, in that could be, could be less in a less populated area. Could be, it won't be more than that because it'll start a new one if there's more. 
But um, we can round it off and say 500 families live in a census block group. There's 1,300 and, and 1,309. And um, so I began to pray for that. And, and by God's grace, with several hundred families adopting when we started, I, I know Matt Adams was one of the first persons I talked to at Westside about this. And there were around 300 people who were at adopted neighborhoods at that time in 2017. We've now said the latest number is 2,739 wow. neighborhoods have been adopted. So that's very exciting. We're seeing um, an average of 50 neighborhoods added a month. Mm -hmm. And we really believe that that's happening by friends telling friends that uh, there, there are some churches that, that are going after this in a big time way. But um, for the most part, it's, it's friends telling friends. Mm -hmm. And and we don't take credit for that number because it's happening all across the city that, that literally we're, we're now at over 60% of the CBGs in the city have someone living on mission. That's very exciting. Uh, Westside alone has 436 lights, uh, people who are adopting their neighborhoods at Westside. So it's a, it's a team effort. It's going to take a whole city, you know, to reach every neighborhood. I think yeah. Rob, a number that Rob uses a lot is 14,000 neighborhoods or something like that. It's a number I've heard him say. So we have a long way to go, even though we're excited about the progress. And one of the things we're hoping for, Roy, and you and I have talked about this, is with the uh, Privacy Act that's, that's in place, the person who signs a person up to be a light, bless every home in many cases, uh, can't share name and email. So we really need to reverse the order and go to people who are adopting and say, would you self-disclose mm -hmm. uh, your name and email so that, that we, could, we could, by God's grace, reach every single family mm -hmm. uh, in Kansas City, see them prayed for, see everyone hear the gospel from a friend, and it, it will take all of us working together. I'm going to put it here in the chat, you know, if they want to, um, they, they can reach me at Gary at lovekc.net, but okay. I'll just say we're all going to share these names. Sure. Because we, we really want to see every, every person reached. Um, for those of you who might not know Bless Every Home, Roy, I'm going to share just a really short little, um, little tour here through. Go for we'll it. Probably have too, too many windows open here. But um, let's see if I can get to... It would have been better if I had done this ahead of time, right? Is that here your bank account and your password there? Yes, it is. And my, my beautiful, my beautiful wife right here. So just uh, real quick on uh, Love KC. LoveKC.net is, uh, is the ministry that we lead. And we're definitely in this together. It's a husband and wife team. You know, we, we've been adopting our neighborhood since 2017. And uh, we've, by God's grace, we've seen five of our neighbors come to faith in Jesus through, just through conversations. Um, not all in the last three years, but um, we're just convinced that God wants it to be just life on life, person on person. When a person becomes a, a believer in Jesus, that's a good start. But what, what God's really after is that person to become a disciple who's a disciple maker. And that takes life on life. Our website's lovekc.net, where we have tools so people can uh, learn how to share their faith with their friend. Friends, one of the things I learned is that people don't feel confident talking to their friends about Jesus, which is, is really sad. Because you can start just by telling your own story. But obviously, people have deep questions about why the world's the way it is. So we've tried in our website to offer help with that. The tool we primarily teach is blesseveryhome.com. And you can see it there um, in the orange, blesseveryhome.com. There you can uh, adopt your neighborhood. I, I'm not You're seeing, not seeing my screen. I'm seeing, you don't see the screen. I'm seeing a text message string. Oh, there. my goodness. Yeah, it's so funny. I'm looking at my. Uh, so I'm looking at my mine. So sorry about that. That's quite all right. You find any? In, were there any interesting texts there? <laughs> okay, here we go. There we go. So my okay. wife. There we go. The, there we go. The that, better, the better that lovely wife of yours. Yep. Website lovekc.net. Thanks for telling me that, Roy. Uh, Blesseveryhome.com. So um, people can put their address in there and adopt. And the default is 40 of their closest neighbors. And uh, what I like about it is there's a prayer care share journey you can track. Uh, over 9 million prayers now. This is an older picture. 9 million prayers have been prayed by 40,000 people across the United States who've adopted their neighborhoods. Um, those are Chris's, Chris's numbers. And then uh, you, can, you can use it on your tablet, your phone, or your computer. Uh, a lot of times people use it on their phone when they prayer walk. 
I try to prayer walk my neighborhood and pray uh, for my neighbors by name. But every day there's a daily, what's called the daily five, where people are able to see five neighbor names for which to pray. After you pray for them, there's a scripture you can use to kind of um, just cement that prayer. And then I usually go to the map. And then from the map, I can see the individual card on each one. Red means I don't know the person, I'm just praying. Yellow means I have a caring relationship with them, so I do know them, but I haven't shared my faith. Green means I have shared my faith, or at least my story with them. And there's a little note section right over here I'm hovering over where I can keep, I can keep notes on the people that we're reaching. And then um, I can see a dashboard. So I can see my reds turn to yellows, my yellows turn to green, my greens turn to blue. And then when people, when people are blue, we want to be missional communities working together to reach others in our neighborhood. And uh, there's the latest picture of the lights, pretty exciting. But you can see there's big pockets around our town that, are, that aren't lighted up. I think about it like when I'm flying over the city on an airline, I look down, I can see all these lights. And every once in a while, you see a park or a river or something where it's kind of dark. And we've got parts of our city here in the middle and then some down around the south and then north and east, we really need to reach. So we need everybody working together. And uh, thanks, Roy, for kind of pulling us together to talk about this. And can't wait to hear, Bree and Matt, your stories. But um, yeah, God's doing something great. And uh, I really believe this can happen quick. I don't think it has to take you know, 10 years away. We want, we want you to live for a long time, bud. But um, I, I think this can happen quickly. I'm praying. I'm praying. Really, I, I, two or three years, I believe we could reach every every family in this city yeah. to be prayed for. Yeah. yeah. So thanks yeah. for the time. Oh, you're, you're welcome. You know, uh, Gary and I have a similar heart. Uh, Ten years ago, I ran into some people who were doing amazing things, uh, seeing the gospel repeat with ordinary people. And uh, just seeing numbers and things that were happening that were just unbelievable. And uh, so they took me under their wings, mentored me, and um, helped me gain a vision for the city. And so Disciple KC came into, into being with this idea uh, of uh, planting the gospel, a self-repeating gospel, uh, in every one of the census blocks that exist in our city, 75,000 plus census blocks, not all of them are populated. Um, but this idea of covering the city geographically, so every man, woman, and child would have a repeated opportunity to see, hear, and respond to Jesus. Um, and uh, I started kicking around the city and, and ran into people like Corey Osborne and, and Gary and other folks, and, and we began to... Um, collaborate together but uh, friends of mine taught me kind of a revolutionary way to see the gospel move and I spent my entire life trying to get people to share their faith and um, you know still the statistics are about one in ten uh, Christians actually uh, do know how to and actively share their faith with one, one or more persons a, a year and so um, these guys began to help me understand that uh, there might be a different way to, to gospel and that was to invite friends, neighbors, and relatives to the table to read the Bible together with you, discover what God has to say about life, and learn to obey it and share it. And, um, and lo and behold, uh, we brought that back here. Uh, I've, I've been at Shoal Creek for the last 25 years, a uh, church up north, and we've been doing that for, you know, for the last eight or 10 years and just seeing people come to faith simply by learning to read the Bible first, learning to obey God, and, um, and then sharing with their friends and it becomes uh, very viral in nature. And so a couple of years ago, God birthed an organization or birthed a, a movement uh, in our city uh, uh, in the hearts of a, a few guys coming out of uh, West side to, um, to, to create a different type of ecclesia, a different type of biblically functioning community in the city. And uh, they uh, fly under the, the, the label, um, of Kansas City Underground, and we're privileged to have uh, two two folks who are practitioners in that network with us tonight. And uh, I'm just gonna, instead of me talk, I'm gonna let them share their stories. And we'll start with Bree. Uh, Bree, tell us uh, tell us about uh, what's going on with you, how you got started, and just some of the stories that are happening in your world. Yeah, sure. Well. Um... I'll just say, start by saying it could have only been God because my husband and I were 
very content not knowing anyone in our neighborhood. And it was about when we had lived here probably six or seven years and didn't know a single neighbor's name was the whole wave. Maybe if you caught him at the mailbox type of thing. And uh, God just uh, laid it on my heart like a ton of bricks. You need to get to know the ladies in this neighborhood and you need to dive into their lives. And um, I said, okay. And so I did, and he really changed my heart toward them. Um, before it wasn't that I didn't want to know them; it was almost just like it. I um, it just wasn't a priority for me. And so he um, he really just it changed my heart in that. So I started hanging out with the ladies, and um, this was way back before I knew any any practicing step that I was supposed to be doing. I was just doing it. So we had parties and. Uh, get-togethers and ladies nights and all kinds of things and um, it was amazing that first night uh, there are 12 houses on our block and that first time I was like I have no idea who's gonna show up it's probably like one lady and all 12 ladies came all 12 I will never forget I was blown away <laughs> and that right there showed me that people are yearning for just craving community and um, so uh, continue to do that. And about two or three years into that, God laid it on my husband's heart to start connecting with the guys in our community. Mm. Um, because we had started talking about how are we going to reach these families? And I said, look, I can reach the ladies, but I can't reach the guys. Like that's gotta be you. And so he laid on his heart and he starts connecting and reaching out with these guys. And, um, and we started just really taking, um, Oh, taking the opportunities of anything we could get, uh, any type of mailbox time, dinners on the deck, s'mores, uh, when like prayer walking, like Gary said, um, just any opportunity we could get. And, and what God really had to change in us was our margin. Mm -hmm. uh, he had to, we had to create margin in our schedule and we had to say no to a lot of things mm -hmm. that we were saying yes to before so that we could say yes to this. And at first we thought, Oh, if we say no to these things, I think we're going to be sad. I think we're going to be lacking something. I think we're going to be missing out. And now he has just taken that and totally replaced it with the joy of getting to know our neighbors. And mm -hmm. so uh, we, uh, just started journeying and, and, and doing that. And then, um, started hearing about, um, you know, some of these tools of, um, DBS discovery Bible study and, um, you know, bless every home and just all these different things of how we could, um, share our faith. And we really wanted to start doing that. But what we realized was we had to, okay. Somebody told me this once they said, you have to do good deeds to build goodwill, to share good news. And so we really started thinking through that. And, and the good deeds that we were doing um, had to do with building relationships with these people and just welcoming them in and creating community in our neighborhood through these parties and, and dinners and just all kinds of stuff that we were doing. So that's the good deeds. And that built goodwill because you really can't, you can, you can do it backwards. You can do it the other way, but we have found that it's so much more effective if you have relationship first and there's trust built, then what you can do is, is start, start planning the gospel and sharing the good news and they'll accept it from you mm -hmm. at that point. This is what we found. So, um, we have been building relationships with the people in our community since 2010 and um, looking back over that decade, just the, the fruit that has come from that and the, this, the good things, all the blessings that have come. I mean, I could tell you story after story after story. I told you you needed to tell me a time limit here. <laughs> uh, but well, it's tell us just one story. been beautiful. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So um, we had a couple that we really connected with and we were having dinner with them and they um, attend a Catholic church down the road. And so my husband just asked them, he said, the Holy Spirit just prompted me to ask, 
tell us about the community that you experience at your church at your at this at the Catholic Church down the road and their response was this that was their response I didn't just freeze like that was really their response and they said uh we don't we don't really understand what do you mean community I mean, they didn't understand what that meant. And so we said, well, look, this is, this is the dream that God's given us for this community. And we just kind of laid it out there. And we said, we want to see um, this to be an extended spiritual family. And we want to see um, lives shared. And we want to see meals shared. And we want to see um, service done for all these people around us. And, and so they started to kind of get the idea of, um, of what community can be like, like real Jesus community. So that was a beautiful one. Mm. Um, one other one I'll share. We um, are using Discovery Bible Study with several of the folks in our community. And that has been a beautiful, uh, that tool is amazing. It is so simple, really levels the playing field. And so uh, we have a bunch of people that we journey with through DBS. And um, the first time we started that uh, with a couple, we said to them, we would like to um, read the Bible with you. And the wife said, it was kind of the same response. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't understand. Like, why, why would you want to do that? We don't understand. And, and, and we said, well, it's super simple. All we want to do is read God's word with you. Talk about what, what we think just kind of, I mean, there's no rules. There's no restrictions. You just tell us what, what do you think? What are you getting out of this? What stands out to you? And then we're just going to talk about how we can apply that to our lives. And she was like, I don't, I don't get it. And her husband's like, honey, honey, I think it's okay. I think they just want to read the Bible with us and then talk about it and then apply it. And we're like, yes, that's what we want to do right there. And, and so just, um, making it simple, making it simple for people. It's just a, a lot of times we make it too hard and too complicated where all we have to do is just engage God word together, build relationships with people and, and watch the Holy spirit work. That's been the most amazing thing for us is watching him move and work. And we just sit back and are like in awe and just praising him and then just waiting for the next thing he's going to do. So that's our story. That's cool. <clears throat> that that deserves like a whole hour or so. So you, you may just put yourself on the hook, Bree, for, for a longer <laughs> discussion here on, the, on another webinar. So, But Matt, you're, you've got uh, not a neighborhood, but a kind of a different focus uh, in, in terms of, of what you're doing. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, our We live out in the country, so uh, the closest things to us are cows. Um, so not really a neighborhood situation, but our micro church is made up of uh, families from our kids sports teams. So baseball families, volleyball families, a basketball family. Um, and what's, so looking back, we were uh, talking with Rob Wegner, who you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of looking at what Bree was talking about margin. What do you, where are you already going? What are you already doing? And where is God already working? And we're like, well, we spend a lot of time at the ball fields, at the volleyball courts, basketball courts. So maybe there's something there. And turns out that there was a lot there. So um, we started uh, being more intentional about getting to know these families better uh, it's kind of nice. You don't have to throw a party cause you're already with them all the time. Uh, we travel around and traveling is a really good way to get to know someone really fast and have some, uh, what start as surface level conversations get pretty deep, pretty quickly. Uh, and that's, that's what we saw. So our micro church is, uh, I think, probably 90% families who did not go to church prior to joining up with us. Mm -hmm. So, and for, for a lot of people, even people who go to church, reading the Bible is a, can be an intimidating thing. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, if you haven't read a lot, it's, it's, you think it's a lot of these and thous and thou shouts. Um, but what the, so we used the discovery Bible study mm-hmm. and we, I started off leading and very soon I had other people lead. Yeah. Um, my daughter who's 14 has led, uh, my mother-in-law has led and everyone in between. Wow. So the, the cool thing about it is, um, anybody can lead and, when you have the Holy Spirit, nobody has to teach. Mm-hmm. So I'm no offense to any preachers in the house, but uh, when yeah, I, I, I'm amazed every time, like we'll pick a, a set of verses to go over. And I think in my own head, cause I'm like, if nobody talks, I have to have something to say. Mm-hmm. And I never have to say anything because God is working and it rarely goes in the direction that I think it's going to. Yeah. And it's always better than what I think in my own head yeah. uh, we're going to be talking about. Yeah. And we've seen uh, marriages grow, uh, parenting improve. I mean, just you name it. Uh, we've seen it. And uh, I can't, um, yeah, I can't imagine doing it any differently now that we've been doing it this way for a year and a half or whatever. Uh, wow. You know, COVID has kind of thrown a wrench into some things, but we just sit out in the front yard on lawn chairs and, and have church. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. So what seminary did you graduate from Matt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kansas State University. <laughs> oh man! So, and and you're just like a regular guy with a regular job. I'm just uh, I'm just a regular guy with a regular job, wow. and uh, that's that's the best part. Is yeah. um, when I first saw the Discovery Bible Study stuff, um, I was like, this seems a little too simple. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to Corey Osmond about it. He's like, no, dude, just. Yeah. Give a shot and, and you'll see. And, you know, you go through the questions and the best part is you get to the, the last two questions. What are you going to do about it? And who are you going to tell about it? Yeah. So it's, it's all built in and uh, it's, it's awesome. Wow. So, so let me ask the same of you, Bree. Uh, where, where did you get your theological education? <laughs> oh, I- enough Kansas State University as well oh, no oh. <laughs> wildcats are represented here oh that's man. right so and and you know what what amazes me you know is the profound impact that both of you are having you know um, along with your spouses in your neighborhood and the sports team um, and just it's ordinary people I mean you, you just you know faithful people who decided that God did call you to make disciples um, and, and you're doing it. And it's, uh, did you find yourself, I mean, was there a hump you had to get over? Was there a, um, a moment when you had, you know, like, you know, both of you mentioned margin issues there, but you know, was there a moment when you realized I really am called to live on mission here to be bringing heaven to earth? When, when you've, um, gone to church and, and kind of done the the normal church thing your entire life and then uh, step out and kind of do it the way we're doing it. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a light change. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's what God was calling us to do. And there were, there were times that we were like, is this going to work? I'll tell a quick story. Um, I was uh, having some men over uh, from our, we, this was early on, so we hadn't really formed anything official yet or whatever. I had some guys over to have a little bonfire and just hang out. And I got the fire. Yeah, I get out there early. I get the fire going. I'm sitting there in the dark by myself because no one was showing up. <laughs> and I was I was all like out there talking to God, like, what the heck? I like I'm I'm trying to do what you want me to do. And I'm sitting out here by myself 
And then God said something like, uh, because I want you to be by yourself right now. And you need to learn that this is about what I'm doing and not about what you're doing. And I kid you not, as soon as that message entered this thick skull, uh, one of my uh, buddies who's now in the micro church texted me and said, Hey, I'm on my way. This is like an hour and a half after it was supposed to start. Oh my. So he came over and we hung out and that's when I realized that, um, you know, I, I'm just a regular guy yeah. and, uh, this is God. It, it's about what God's doing. And when you join God, yeah. it, that's the game changer. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Bree? Yeah. My first thought is that every day there are little humps to get over um, as far as a, a big one for my husband and I, and he would say the same thing is getting ahead of God, <laughs> thinking we know what we're doing, thinking we know what he wants us to say to whom and when and where and, and not consulting with the God of the universe first. Mm. Uh, and so there have been many times that we have gotten ahead of ourselves and it straight up did not work out. <laughs> um, people that we thought got, we, you know, we we're like, they would be great to invite into this with us, maybe co-leaders or, you know, a missional team. And we um, have, and we asked them and, and they gave us these blank looks and we're like, yeah, I don't think so. And we're like, what? <laughs> we were just sure you were it, you know, and, and um, we just, we just got ahead of God. And so he consistently and constantly and lovingly reminds us, stay in step with me. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing, guys. I'm God, you know what I mean? Yeah. Stay in step with me and I will lead you. I have a plan, but you have to submit to my authority and you have to wait on me mm -hmm. and you have to consult me. You have to not even consult, you know, you have to mm -hmm. come to me mm -hmm. and, um, and sit at my feet and listen. And so that's kind of a big thing that we are constantly fighting with, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. Super. So, I mean, Matt and Bree, I would love to have you guys back sometime and uh, maybe independently and just, you know, focus on this because I'm, I'm thinking, you know, the stories that you're telling uh, because, you know, you're ordinary folks, you're just, you know, um, people in the trenches with normal jobs, living kind of situations. Um, I believe that that's the only way we're going to achieve the Great Commission. You know, if we're going to reach every man, woman, and child in Kansas City, then we're going to have to engage every man, woman, and child who is a follower of Jesus to, to get off the bench and in the game. And I'm just uh, inspired uh, by, by hearing just the, the little bit of the story that, that you guys are telling. So uh, really appreciate it. Um, let me share a screen here real quickly. And uh, just for those that are joining us or been out there, um, you know, I think one of the things that I hear coming from both of your stories is that you all have kind of understood what it's like to get into that, that the habits uh, of a multiplying disciple. And, and God has blessed that by multiplying it. And you have planted, you know, in a neighborhood and in a traveling sports team, ecclesia, you know, the, the biblically functioning community that Jesus talks about that we often call church, but unfortunately that term gets a little bit messed up in our culture. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I've seen this um, happen so many times in so many parts of the world. And, and uh, we would love to engage those lights here in Kansas City, uh, the couple of thousand now 50, you know, neighborhoods being in, uh, adopted on a weekly basis, as Gary shared earlier, we would love to help provide another tool to help people understand how to live these habits out in their neighborhood. You know, it all starts in the heart of God. You know, it starts with a father who wants to reclaim his family and it, and it leads to a dependent relationship, learning to pray and, and have the eyes of, of the father, you know, see the world like Jesus sees the father, engage, find those, you know, spiritually interested people, those persons of peace, learn to, to, to understand what it looks like to disciple, help people and invite them into discovery, begin to assemble them into these um, these, these gatherings uh, that we call micro churches or you know, biblically functioning communities, and then to keep that multiplying. So if you're, if you're out there, you're a part of that 
uh, uh, one of those uh, thousand people, or even if you're not and you want to adopt them, uh, we would love to have you get involved, you know, join, uh, get, get to the Love KC website, um, get a hold of Gary. Uh, I'll, I'll put his uh, email out uh, in this link when it goes out on Facebook. Uh, sign up to Bless Every Home. Uh, let us know uh, about uh, joining one of these trainings that will be uh, helping people understand what it's like to live this missional lifestyle that, that we hear uh, from, from Matt and Bree. So I just appreciate you guys coming tonight. Thanks so much. Um, see some old friends out there in the, in the, the chat box. Uh, it's good to, good to have you here. Uh, Gary, you want to finish us off? Last words? Sure. Yeah, thanks, Roy. And great job, Matt. Thank you, Bree. Love those stories. And I know there's a lot more stories out there we need to hear and collect. And I just want to say to anybody who's going to reach out to me, we will share the names among, there's a, probably, probably about between five and seven different ministries who kind of, you know, we've all stacked hands and just said, we don't care who gets credit. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're going to try to reach the city for Jesus to see every neighborhood adopted, every, per, every family prayed for, every person hearing the gospel from a friend. And you know, we'll go to other churches and recruit and uh, other kinds of networks too, because we just think it's going to take all of us. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, when Nehemiah built the wall, everybody had a role to mm -hmm. play. That was part of his genius mm -hmm. in seeing the wall built so quickly because everybody had a, had a part to play. Yeah. I don't, I don't think one part's more important than another. They're all, they're all important. And yeah. so we need everyone. We need everyone in this. Well, Gary, would you pray for us as we close yeah. tonight? Yeah. So let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your call to go and, um, and make disciples of, of all peoples. Um, thank you that you called us to be fishers of men. And uh, that's the priority for our lives. So forgive us for the times that we get so busy doing other things. We forget about the relationships, the, the children that are yours, your sons and daughters walking all around us every day. Many of them, most of them, unaware of your love. And we, we quite possibly could be the only, only link to them, the only bridge. So Lord, help us to stay close to you to love God and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Help us, Lord, to hear from the Holy Spirit, to follow promptings and leads and, and know that your fingerprints are everywhere. We need to help people understand that, that you're already moving. We just need to join you in what you're doing. Um, so thank you. Thank you, God. As people listen today, I pray that they'll be thinking about four or five people that they could invite to watch this and to join the same journey. I think you'd be thinking about opening their home like Bree's opened her home or Matt's opened his home mm. and that we could, um, could make the home like the, uh, the first place, uh, the first church in a sense. So thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. We love you. Keep doing it. Lord, may this whole city just be filled with the light and the love of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.